we want this sofa, but it costs 15,000 pounds. Our budget does not have the capacity. So we're gonna do something very cheeky. We've come up with a plan to make this designer sofa for cheap, and we're not gonna stop until this appears in our living room. This is not gonna be easy. We'll make mistakes. People will even doubt us. We're trying to make a sofa from scratch. <laughs> not something I would take lightly. <laughs> but we're gonna try our best to answer the golden question. How is it made? Yeehaw! Now, this is the exact sofa we want to make. It's the creamy two-armed twin of this sofa. But before we even got started, we had a big problem. We don't have a clue the dimensions of this. Without the dimensions, we don't know how big to make this sofa. And that's why we're going to guesstimate. It's a risky tactic, but no risk, no reward. So, we're going to do some drawings. And we're going to figure out how to make this. First, we found the foam we think they used to make this. It's 25 centimeters wide, and we're going to use this to work out the measurements of the sofa. GCSE maths, pi r squared, and that. Brah. Yeah, it didn't work. That way it fit in our living room. That is this drawing board, man. <laughs> the drawing board's empty. <laughs> is that normal for your feet to touch the floor on a sofa? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> but after a lot of trial and error, we cracked it. We were feeling so proud of ourselves until we realized the dimensions were on their website this whole time. Two days wasted. But now we have the measurements to make this sofa perfectly. So it's time to answer the first big question. How did they make the wood? Also, what kind of wood is it? And how is it even joined together? <sighs> These questions are just giving me one headache. After some daytime stalking, we found some clues on their Instagram. It's a wood called Tinia. And you'd expect that to be solid wood on a 15K sofa, right? Wrong. When we looked at this picture, we realized something naughty naughty. The pattern of the wood is going in two different directions, which only means one thing. It's a veneer. If you don't know what a veneer is, we'll be explaining that later, because there's something important that we need to tell you now. Did you know that wood comes in different tones? And different tones in one room can clash. That's ugly. Nobody wants ugly. But the solution is simple. Just match your tones. The flooring in our living room is neutral, so our sofa should have a neutral wood too. It's simple. Use your brain. Sadly, Tinio is a warm-toned wood. This one is nice and neutral. It's called American, American Dark, Dark Walnut. Walnut. And we'll be using it instead. What are we about to do, Colour? We're getting the wood. <laughs> this is the factory where our wood is getting cut. We want to see how the pros do it. So what's a veneer? In essence, a veneer is a really thin piece of nice wood stuck to the surface of not so nice wood. It's just an illusion to make it look premium. This stuff is called edge banding. It's glued to the ugly edges of the veneered wood using this machine. By the way, you can do edge banded at home with iron on strips and this cheap tool will help you get smooth edges. We didn't have time for that, so we just ordered the wood and we were so happy when it arrived. Happy? But scared. Let's do it. 400 pounds on wood. We've never joined wood before. Oh, no, no, no. So we paused and got a second opinion. We found a carpenter online and he did these drawings for us. For free? We can't make any mistakes. If we make the drawing perfect, then we don't need to make mistakes. We're toast. <laughs> I accidentally started filming that word. <laughs> I can see a reflection in it. <laughs> this, this is scary. This is scary. Hey. We started by lining the boards up. Mm, perfect song. <laughs> then marking the holes where we drill. We're connecting the wood using dowel because it's cheap and strong, if you do it right. This is a dowel jig and it's meant to help the wood connect perfectly. But these reviews say otherwise. If we don't drill these holes in the right spot, it will make it so hard to fit together. And we missed the mark a couple of times, so I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't optimistic. It's not that bad. Uh, let's just hope the wood forgives us. Moment of truth. <laughs> Is it in? I think so. Okay, it's working. Yes. Oh, look at that! Wow. Our first join worked, and that gave us the confidence to continue. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god! god. Ah. I actually cannot believe you did that. What the hell? <laughs> you are a troll. I need to put another one in. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> How do 
we get at that last bit? I don't understand. You have to sub me in. <laughs> Whack man. <laughs> Whack man. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie, it is looking leng. One cute brown ting. Oh, fine, gun. We had to squeeze. So it went from looking like this to this, just like in the carpenter's drawing. Now that the frame's stable, it's time to make the wood shine. Three parts finished, one part accelerator. It helps speed up the drying process. It should take one week. Let's get busy. Damn. Now that looks. Good. While this dries, we're gonna move on to the next stage and this is where things get really interesting. <laughs> you can pause here to see everything we learned. Yeehaw! It's time to answer the second big question. How do we do the foam? For this, we had a crazy idea. We're gonna upcycle this mattress. <laughs> gonna need some sort of more foam on top. Yeah. And then it'll be super comfy. And from our research, there are so many different types of foam. So we have to pick the right one or else it's just gonna feel weird on the bum bum. That's why we journaled all our findings so far and we followed a random lead so we could find some more answers. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Yeah, just like that. We landed at the Sit Collective, which is a lovely group of women who specialize in upholstery. We were just giving off desperate vibes, so they gave us all the help they could. We've got some proper dimensions in the back as yeah, well. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, proper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was very humbling. Our little confidence vanished. So we had to ask them, do you think we can do this? Everything takes longer when you've never done yeah. it before. Please say I yes. I believe in you guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> with our newfound foam knowledge, we came up with a juicy plan, and we think you're gonna like the taste of it. You see, the foam in a sofa is kind of like a sandwich. Ciabatta. And for the first layer, we're gonna use prosciutto. Uno, due, tre. This springy ham is the mattress. Mayo for the glue. Then we're gonna stick the hard foam on top. Or you can call it cucumber. More glue to taste. Then we'll stick on the soft foam. Avocado. <laughs> Then something called Dacron. And once everything's stuck together, it'll be good to eat. I, I mean, me sit on. Okay, we're just making lunch. So there are a few complexities to this plan, but we'll go with that later. <laughs> oh! So right now we've got this mattress and we want to cut it so it can fit inside this frame. And hopefully, if we've done our measurements right, it will fit. Oh. Always use protection. <laughs> it's time to introduce you to the hard foam. And the soft foam. We need both of them because we were warned that using a mattress could make our sofa too squishy. Oh, incidentally. <laughs> That's why we wanted hard foam to support the middle. And the soft foam on top is just so it doesn't feel like we're sitting on rocks. While we chopped the foam, everything stopped going to plan. There was a little friction between us. How's it looking on that side? <laughs> Not good, man. What have you done? I think I should maybe take over. <laughs> I'm taking it. <laughs> yeah, I need that stability in the middle. Yeah, the stability you weren't giving me. <laughs> I was giving you the stability. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna fit perfect. It did not fit perfect. <laughs> no. Don't look so defeated, it's not bad. <laughs> Let me process, let's put a lot of money on this. <laughs> so we tried our best to fix it. It's like carving a kebab. Then I cut the soft foam and it went okay. Watch this, watch this. <laughs> like a kebab. Perfect. <laughs> look at that. That's not mine. <laughs> Next, we ordered these big bongo foams for the armrest. And we had to figure out how to cut a 45 degree angle into a cylinder. This is the hardest cut so far. Do you want to do it? Let me see you do first. <laughs> oh, yes. That's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. A few more cuts and we gutted them all. The finished sofa is going to look something like this and we're closing in. Wow. We made a few little adjustments and now it's time to glue it all together. <laughs> Safety first, mask on. Let's go! This adhesive is so good at binding foam, but with that positive, there are negatives. British weather, eh? Once it's stuck, it's stuck. There's no room for error. 
going all the way. So we used the frame as a guide to spank it into place, but we couldn't use it for this middle join. Careful, careful, careful. Okay. Yes! With this, we've nearly completed the phone. We just have one more hurdle. Dacroy. Dacroy. This is the magic ingredient magic to soak. It pads them out. It, pads them it out. makes them plump. plump. Dacron, Dacron is your friend. friend. But before we get into that, take a look at this. It's the shape we got from cutting around the bongo foam, and we're going to use it to cut out the Dacron. We basically just duplicated the shape of the arm so the Dacron wraps around it perfectly. In upholstery, that's called a pattern. So if everything goes to plan, we'll be able to use this pattern to cut the fabric shape too. But as of right now, we don't even know how to sew. Huh? Right now, it might look a bit marshmallowy and out of proportion, but when the fabric wraps around it, it pulls it in really tight. And this stuff is how you get that plump look. Plush. Plump, cheap, tight. <laughs> and that's how we made the foam. Yeehaw! So far we've figured out the wood and the foam, but this is where we've reached our limit. How do we do the fabric? We can't sew. How? We can't make this. How? We can't make How? This. How? <laughs> How? You can never make it! We were genuinely lost, but we did have one hidden trump card. <laughs> but we didn't want to use our trump card yet because we still had some research to do. So we went on a trip to find out more and it did not go well. You might remember that the material that we're looking for is called twill. But we were struggling to find it, so we started looking for similar options. Like the look of like, the boucle. Behind you. Not only was it hard to find the right fabric, but they were also expensive too. £49 I think, per metre. Like that's £1,500 for what we want. Our main criteria with the fabric was the Martindale score, and that's the only thing we knew. What's the Martindale? That's good, I was asking everybody what's the Martindale. What's the Martindale? <laughs> The higher the number, the more durable it is. We're trying to make a sofa from scratch. Not something I would take lightly. <laughs> What's the Martindale on both of these ones? Oh, now you're asking. A fabric above 30,000 Martindale is ideal for a sofa. But other than that, we had no answers until this moment. Go to Chelsea Design Centre. Design Centre. And this is where we found our sofa, Sage. With over 20 years of experience, she seemed to know everything. And she took us to enlightenment. Want to learn the process of making a sofa properly? Yeah. Because you know what purpose. happened after the Industrial Revolution to furniture? No. This is the moment I opened the cushions of Pandora's couch. Furniture was always made in a very classic way, which was a. T I don't know if you know some of these brands, so Mortaini. Minotti is probably one of the most famous. Mr. Busnelli from BB Italia. Boffi and the Padova. Saw the rubber duck and he thought, I want my sofas to all look the same. 40 minutes of facts. She had the answers. So we asked the one question that was really bugging us. Upholstering the arms of this sofa seems impossible. Look, we don't know how the foam and fabric attach to the wood. Can you figure it out? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, I learned about making, but not so much the intricate details mm. of it. <sighs> It's a big L. But we learned so much today and hopefully that's a bridge we can cross when we get there. This has been facts, it's been knowledge. Yeah, I'm tired. Morning. Morning. Today is a new day and we need to pick the fabric. We've been collecting. All of these innocent fabrics differ in color, texture and price. And today we're picking the final fabric. Only one will remain. Wrong color. Wrong texture. Just wrong. I didn't want it to end like this. Too pricey. You feel cheap. And then there were two. Please, I've got the mutton. There was one. And then there was one. We got the fabric at a good price, but we're scared to look at the total we spent. So this sofa needs to look good. Next, we cut the fabric using the pattern and it was starting to take shape. It's kind of a sofa now. <laughs> we use these pins to help us adjust the fabric and find the perfect measurement. Our first time using a sewing machine. It was really tricky. But not as tricky as it could have been. Cause if you couldn't tell already, we've used the trump card. This is Beth. My fiance, and she really loves sewing. Beth taught us how to use the sewing machine so we could get this done, and she even helped a lot with the sewing too. If we do this wrong, the zip will 
Rip. Expertly sewn together <laughs> by me. <laughs> whoa, whoa, slow down. Okay, you need to speed up. <laughs> Why aren't you going? Because I'm scared. I'm gonna slow it down. You need to speed up. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Next, we use the measuring spoon to make this curved edge on this cursed arm. Smooth. But here's where things get rough. We avoided a pulser in the arms because we can't afford to get it wrong. We tried everything to figure this out, but nothing worked and we were really demoralized. Then Cullen got thinking. We staple the fabric in so it is so tight and perfect on that edge. Then insert the foam while this is stapled. That's going to be a hard maneuver. Never. At this point, we are lost, and this risky plan is our only hope of finishing this so far. I hope that works. It's gonna. And what's the worst that could happen in this situation? We. As you can tell, we were pooing our pants. No, we felt actually shaking. Dude. Honestly, at this point, we were just exhausted. This whole process had taken three times as long as we planned. We wanted it to look good, but it just wasn't quite looking right. Yeah! So we just kept on fiddling and fiddling through exhaustion. I was ready to give up. I was tired. But Cullen held on for us and we made a few more tweaks. We set out on a mission to make this sofa from scratch and it has appeared in our living room. This is an incredible dupe. We battled this sofa for eight weeks until we made a breakthrough. Moving Mountains are the creators of the original sofa and to be honest, they must be doing magic. But how well do you think we did recreating it? The original sofa cost 15K and in total we spent 1.5K. I feel like we've come over so many hurdles. But here we are, comfy. It's really comfy. It's comfy as hell. I am so proud of us. <laughs> we did a drawing and now it's here. Well done, man. You too, man. We actually, we actually killed this, man. Yeah. We're gonna keep on making things and it's gonna get crazier. So, subscribe! Please! Sub! <laughs> Please, we put so much effort in. Please! <laughs> <laughs>